Hey, Ginger, I believe we're live from Houston, Texas. Okay, so this is our story time series. The painting photograph you're seeing is myself, my sister. On the right is my brother Jensen, and then from the far left is my brother Dennis, who's the oldest, and then Jay, and then my sister Jeannie, me, and then my brother Jensen. So uh, that, that was us kids, and if you're watching our story time, if John will fl flash down to the screen on the table, the desk here, we've been doing this for about a week, and these are some of the different paintings that we've created during story time. In each one of these, has um, uh, you know has a story of something that happened to me in the um, you know seventy what six Some years history. of my Some life of on the planet of upbringing. my upbringing and so uh, this, that's that's but also these paintings are all commissioned pieces that can that were commissioned uh, by our academy members for, for that when anybody signed up um, this November and December as an annual member either as a red or purple member for one two or three years. Everyone was also gifted a, a original painting, not a tutorial. Um, but we thought it might be fun to paint these. Uh, I have to paint them anyway, so I'm painting them on YouTube um, and under story time. And there's all these stories with it. They're not tutorials, so don't under, misunderstand. But we're welcome to. I thought you'd be a fly on the wall and, and watch me paint in the studio. Uh, this one with the birds it was like three sessions. I think the cat was one. The um, the, the water lilies was one. And um, Today we're going to be, um, we're going to talk about, a, a bit, when I was uh, a fif 15, going on 16, I was exiled to boarding <laughs> school in Switzerland. So I, we're going to I talk about that. I terminology that. there, boss. And, um, I was exiled. I was, I was, because there, no, there was no me staying in the United States, right? So we're going to go into that. I just, we have a lot of these paintings. We also have, um, and like I say, these are all soul paintings. But I painted them on YouTube, and if you want to see how something like that might be painted, we encourage you to watch our story time series. And I mean to just kind of make a catalog of stories and uh, that you, you can easily access. So I want to hear the story about the, you know, being exiled to Switzerland. I uh, maybe I can um, somehow I need to co co collate that for you guys. I haven't done it yet, but I will. Right now, we've only been doing it for about you know, a week of, of stories, so you can still, it's pretty easy to find them now. And the thumbnails are changing. The, the original th thumbnails have got to be changed. We, it took us a while to figure out a thumbnail that we want to use. So um, the I, whole I have- The process has taken us a while. Come on. I had, uh, we, I have a lar large number of uh, six by eights to do, eight by tens, nine by twelves, and a few, uh, the uh, 12 by 16s were for people that signed up for three years as purple members. So that's what you saw, some of the larger ones. And currently, uh, we're done with those. So we're now, I'm, I'm working on some 8 by 10s that you know, never know about the size. I have a few more 9 by 12s. I have over 45 paintings to finish. So um, story time may last a while. Um, <laughs> And and, we, and and if you like it, you know, I've got tons of stories. I'm just, these story times are just really about, you know, life and times of Ginger Cook, right? Kind of, really, that's what they are. Um, and right now our schedule plans to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for story time. Yeah, so it's probably not on Saturdays or Sundays. But right now we're, we're doing that. And um, we still have to do other things. So I've got an 8 by 10 canvas. And I'm going to, as I paint this, again, it's not a tutorial. But I am using acrylic paints and a stretch canvas, okay? And, uh, and I'm using a Stay Wet palette, if anybody wants to know that. I guess I can, you know, give, but if you watch our Monday show, which are, is to, are tutorials, um, then we actually do tutorials Mondays at 530 Central on YouTube, as well as over 700 tutorials and step-by-step -step in our academy. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, start painting and, um, and telling you stories. So what do you think of that, okay? I just think that's primo. Yeah, so that, that's the big plan here, okay? So I, my parents adopted, we have to give, you can't start in the middle of a story. One of the things my <laughs> daughter Cinnamon used to do, and she still does it, is she wants to tell you something that happened, and she starts in the middle of the story, and you have, there's no reference, so it goes, she starts telling you what something happened at the hairdresser, but you haven't told her she's at the hairdresser, okay? So you know, it makes I, I the story hard to, hard to follow. So I'm gonna try to 
not do that. So when I was 15, I was living in Seattle, Bellevue, Washington, on our place called Triple Creek Ranch. I had a, a couple of horses and did a lot of horse shows and riding, uh, skiing in the winter. My sister was three years older, and uh, so she was getting ready to go to college uh, that year, uh, that following fall. And I think my mother was kind of over the concept of teenagers and their antics, though my sister didn't really do a lot of stuff. Probably the antics were more me, but you know, I don't want to go there. But anyhow, so uh, we're, we, we've gotten in a rather large fight about something. I'm trying to remember what my mother and I, my father and I tried to stay out of it. My adopted mother and I got in a large fight, but you have to understand, she was the kind of person that uh, took you shopping with your own money, trust fund money, and then you had to thank her for profusely for, for her time. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, you did. Th thank you for taking you shopping for the time to spend your money, right? And you said, well, how did you have any money? Well, because uh, I was born uh, to a so family of, uh, you know, my uh, real father was a multimillionaire, businessman in Seattle, owned a bunch of theaters, and... Um, and when he died, he left us a pile of money, okay? So when we were adopted by the judge and his wife, uh, they, of course, became executors of that money and spent it freely. And um, uh, so anyway, um, and, and they were older when they took us in. I was like, if you saw yesterday's fly on the wall, we showed you a picture, of, I was five. And um, they were in their 40s, and my dad was... I think 10 years older than my mother. And then and they couldn't have kids. And in those days, not being able to have kids was paramount to being locked out of, you went to a party, everybody talked about, oh, my son's graduating, everybody's doing this. And, and you're not, work, women didn't work in those days for the most part. They went, it wasn't like you'd go just talk about your career, okay? Because you couldn't do that. So um, my, uh, my, so when they adopted us, took in five kids, then mother had something to talk to pe people at parties. I know that sounds strange, but, I'm, and that's, that is the perception of a child. See what I mean? Because, I mean, you're, you're, I'm only can tell you that I don't know what her th anybody's thinkings are, but from a kid's standpoint, that's pretty much what that looked like to me. Make sense? So anyhow, um, I'd gotten into trouble, and I'm trying to think what that was. If I remember it, I'll tell you. Probably blocked it out. And my mother and I were having a large fight. And um, she had said that, you know, she wasn't going to tolerate this kind of behavior anymore for me. And guess what? Um, there were boarding schools. She might send me back to Annie Wright Seminary in Tacoma, Washington, uh, for a, um, a, a boarding school. And, of course, have you ever seen those things in the movies, those plots in the movies where the person says things like, um, someone threatens you and then the other person tells what they're going to do. Um, not understanding that just saying nothing would have been better. Because right now, for instance, if... Um, you're going to get revenge on somebody, why tell them? Just do it, right? But, of course, when she threatened me with, um, with a boarding school in a right, seminary in Tacoma, which um, was a very religious school, oh, my God. It just, uh, if you want to just get turned off religion, go there. Uh, we, but that's another story. So anyway, <laughs> um, we'll have to talk about boarding school at Annie Wright Seminary another time. Because I think the school is still in existence. But for me as a child, I was exiled there in the fourth grade. So here I am, 15, and, um, uh, and my mother's, uh, you know, furious and threatening boarding school again. And so the smart ass child that I was, because I, God, I was fearless. I can't believe the stuff I said. So I said, well, try it. Um, I will just tell our, my therapist, Dr. Kaufman, that uh, I am too crazy to go. 
and um, he will write them, and you'll never get me in. Ha! Huh. You know what I mean? Go ahead, try to, try that. See how far that gets you, right? I swear to God, I said that. <laughs> Just this is a stupid child, right? For as smart as I was, man, common sense, right? That unstrategic. And then my mother, in the midst of this giant argument we were having, says, "Well." If I can't get you in, because she believed me too, she understood I was right. That if Kaufman told him I was crazy, because uh, he was the, he was the child psychologist that all the rich families in Bellevue, Wash, in Seattle, Washington used. Um, uh, all, uh, all the boarding schools, all the kids went to him, and of course she had gone to some of these parties. So her kid had to go to a psychiatrist because, well, I probably needed it, but still, uh, we went because. Um, uh, I'm going to try a little of that paint anyway, if it's not blending out. I'm just try a little of that paint color, John. I'm going to risk it. Okay. So, um, anyhow, uh, she, she did believe me that, um, and, you know, in those days, you couldn't, you know, call, call the cops. And, you know, my father was a superior court ju judge. So there's no calling the cops on these people anyway, no matter what they did. They're just, they had, they had total immunity, okay? I remember one time my father saying to my mother, if you're going to abuse these kids, I'm going to leave the room. You know, gee, Dad, thanks so much. <laughs> Gosh, thank you. So anyway, I'm sitting there saying, you know, try it. See what Dr. Coffin says. You'll never get me in there, okay? And then my mother shouts back, in, in, in a, a, a tired voice, if I can't get you in to, because she realized I was right, if I can't get you in there, I will send you to boarding school in Switzerland. And then I stomped off, got in the car and drove with my friends and stomped out of the house, hopping mad and feeling a little wounded. And then I got to thinking about what she said so about, I, we drove back in the car, and I walked up to her and I said, what kind of boarding school in Switzerland? <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, like what? What do you have in mind? She said, I said, there are boarding schools in Switzerland. Do they ski? Because we have a skier. Could I go skiing? Because I knew I had lost. She was going to do something. I promise you, there's, um, there's only, and I, I certainly saw this when I was in Switzerland, too, that there are... Um, levels of, of boarding schools. There's some that are a little bit like uh, homes for juvenile, total homes for juvenile delinquent, just the rich kids, um, you know, reform schools, <laughs> just, you know. And then there's some that are pretty pleasant and then everything kind of in between there. So um, I also understood that if I gave her a lot of shit, that probably um, I could end up in something pretty much to high school prison. You know what I mean? Because um, that's the kind of stuff that she was capable of doing. And I know that sounds very harsh, but trust me, it, it was. It's the truth. It was, it was. And um, the judge would have let her. And um, so when I came back and I said, well, what kind of boarding school in Switzerland, okay? Then she said, um, well, there could be, you know, you know, we could do something. So this was before the Internet. And long distance was Bellevue, Washington, five miles away to, uh, to a friend's house. You know what I mean? So calling Switzerland was like calling Mars. Do you know what I mean? That's how far away Switzerland was in, in, in you know, in 1962. See, 1963. That's how far that was away. So, um, she somehow, she got, she got a lot of magazines and newspapers and stuff, and she, you know, she had read the ads on, she must have been thinking about Switzerland for a while, because she found this, now that we're thinking about it, she found this Switzerland school very fast for someone that <laughs> had no idea about a Swiss school. She must have been plotting this all along, I promise you. Toying, well, if I could get that kid to Switzerland, the trust fund will pay for the school, and then we don't have to fool around with them, that child, for a while, and she's already beginning to be a problem, and her sister's in college, and her, you know, on and on. I could just imagine the wheels rolling in her little head, 
Um, you know, honestly, um, I could see how I could see how that was. So, um, anyhow, not not a few minutes later, she sits there and she says, "I've found this lovely uh, school in Switzerland, and um, they they go they have a chalet in the mountains, and in the winter time you move up there and you go skiing, and um, I think you'll love it." She says. Okay. Sounds good, right? So anyhow, uh, within, um, within a heartbeat, I was enrolled in boarding school in Switzerland and set to be sent there uh, that fall. And so my mother, uh, you know, uh, decided that I, at 15 I couldn't be trusted to fly on an airplane to Switzerland. Interestingly, I was going home. They had no trouble sending when I came back from that school that was that that summer. Uh, suddenly, I could fly on an airplane all by myself, but then I couldn't. Okay, got that? So somebody flew over with you. So my punky punky, which was her nickname, flew over with me. And uh, though we her friends called her punky, we couldn't call her punky. You know, it's just too familiar, right? So yeah, she she flew over with me, and we came. We went over early. And we were in, um, let's see, what was the name of the, Montreux in Switzerland. And um, we stayed in this hotel. And, um, uh, you know, we got to see, you know, she got to see the school. And we had, in those days, they had, they had a railway express. This was before FedEx. So they had something called Railway Express. Okay. And um, Railway Express was literally, uh, you know, we had, I had a big trunk, like a footlocker, and that, um, and that, you know, it was shipped over. So my stuff and everything was shipped over. And I remember shopping for, for cl school clothes uh, for Switzerland. And um, if growing up in Seattle, um, the, the fashion of the time, and it was, it's, it's called Pendleton, it's out of Oregon, but... Washingtonians kind of like that style of clothes. And um, I had like these plaid skirts, really pretty, beautiful plaid skirts and um, uh, socks and uh, high in socks, high, you know, like long socks and shoes. And I had, I had some neat clothes. They were just beautiful. Of course, nobody in Switzerland wore anything like that. Um, and then the kids from Switzerland, they, they came from all over the world. They, they were from all over the world. All, I don't, can't, can't tell you how many countries. And um, so my mom and I were in Switzerland together for about, I don't know, not, not too long. And I got to dry this and more story coming. Ooh, a cliffhanger. Here we go. So for those of you who are joining us, this is a story time. This painting is not a tutorial. It is a commission piece I'm doing for um, one of our Academy members. Everybody, anybody that signed up between November and, and to the end of this year uh, for, for as an annual member, use a red or purple, in one, two, or three years, uh, has gifted by me a original painting. And they're all original, they're not tutorials. But I am painting them on YouTube, okay? Well, you know, we're painting them and the camera just happens to be on. Yeah, that's it. That's the difference. It's not a tutorial of any kind. And I'm telling you stories, story time. Um, kind of, And this one is entitled Exile to Switzerland.
Okay? <laughs> so everybody's kind of, and, and really was exiled. I mean, that just you guys, you, you heard the story, right? I mean, that, how, what else would you call that, right? It sounds like exile to me. Yeah, huh? And um, so it's interesting. Uh, Chateau Brocedra was the name of the school. What was it? Chateau Brocedra, uh, House of the Beautiful Pines. And they had a, a really nice um, school. It was, and they um, they were near the lake, uh, the lake, Lake Lausanne. And there was a, a uh, the school had a backyard, which I don't believe we ever went in. Backyard garden, high walled. And then, um, then the um, uh, there was a walkway, kind of a you know like a public walkway, and then you know, out to the lake, but it wasn't, like, there wasn't a beach you could go to. The lake was not acceptable unless you just liked nice views, okay? Uh, and you could see across the lake, you could see into France. So, Chateau Brocedra and Montreux. Um, some years ago, when Cinnamon and I were, uh, if you remember, Cinnamon and I uh, went painting in, in, into France, we took a road trip into um, Montreux from Switzerland, and I showed her where I went to school, but had been closed for about two years back then, back in 2000. So it, would go, it was going long after I left, okay? They were a very successful uh, boarding school. So anyhow, um, so when we went to the school, I remember, not, you know, so my mother, the one concession was because most of the rooms were dorm, like had like four or five beds in them, you know. They had a bunch of rooms and stuff. Um, but um, my mother did get me the one single room I could have by myself. I had my own little room, a little bit like a, a shoebox closet, but I had a bed in. And there was this. We, we had gone shopping for a little trunk for the foot of my bed. This beautiful little antique trunk, and my mother had remember. I still remember at the time her saying that. Um, um, that if I uh, let her have the trunk when I got back home from Switzerland, when she died, I could have it back. I never saw the trunk again. It went to Cousin Caroline, but that's another story, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just I never saw the dumb trunk again, right? But it was a kind of an old trunk, and I had to have some stuff in it and stuff. So that was the, you know, I had a closet and like that. So anyhow, um, now this was an interesting school the um, something called the family. We, the the lady that ran the school was probably in her sixties, and her son and daughter were teachers there. And her son was, oh, probably about thirty-five, but quite nice looking. And um, he taught some of the uh, older older senior students, and there were all kinds of kids. Like there was. The, the, the Americans had their own floor. I know that sounds weird, but it seems like all the American kids, which was about five or six of us, had a floor. And then there was another floor above the stairs above that. And uh, we had kids from, um, we had kids from, we had a girl from Greece. We had, um, we had a couple of kids from uh, Bahrain, Bahrain. And, and um, we had some kids from, um, uh, let's see, there was a couple from Mexico, there was a couple girls, and there, the girls from Mexico had already graduated, and they considered this school to be their finishing school, okay? Um, you know, where you, and, and, the, and probably 100 years before that, when you went to a Swiss boarding school as a finishing school, you probably learned table manners and how to come out in polite society and that kind of stuff, right? But, you know, this school was so far from a, what you'd think of as a romantic novel finishing school, it was hysterical, because we were not even close to that, right? Um, but nonetheless, uh, we, had sc we had school on um, Saturdays uh, for half day, and um, we could go to town on Saturdays in the afternoon, and then on Sunday, you after you went to church, you could go to town and shop and stuff like that, okay? But other than that, you were pretty much, 
a prisoner of Zenda in that school. <laughs> Just that's where you lived, right? In that school. So, um, anyhow, was so we had let's say those kids. We had the girl from Greece. We had a we had a bunch of girls from South America and other countries like uh, and um, Argentina and. Um, all from very wealthy families in South, South America, I would say. And then my friend, my closest friend at the school, her name was Tracy Griswold. I don't mind using names. She's still alive, probably. She was older than me. She might not be. But anyway, Tracy came from a large, rich family back east. And... Um, and then that, and her friend that she had met at another boarding school, and I can't think of her name. <laughs> she was up. They were they were like a year older than me. Um, her friend, um, family, you know, worked three jobs to make sure that her her this other girl could go. She came from a very middle class American family, and um, a boarding school in Switzerland. Her parents were doing the best they could kind of like what people might do to sacrifice to get their kid into ice skating or something. There was um, um, so that kid was you know pretty much reminded daily by her parents that, that she was there because they were all sacrificing and the rest of the family too and she better not screw up. It's kind of mean makes sense. So you had that, that those kids. Let's see, but there were some others too though. There was a it was a full classroom. But there wasn't enough kids where we didn't we didn't break it up into ninth or tenth or twelfth grade. And there were just you took certain subjects depending on your requisite, right? So I might have had a some some of the older kids in a class I was taking and vice versa. But most right, for instance, we took um English and our when I had to take English, my teacher was from um Wales. And um, he had a big, thick Welsh, uh, Wales, Welsh accent. And um, he said words funny. <laughs> like instead of, instead of saying, uh, you know, do you have any absorbent co cotton or something, right? It was cotton wool. And so, you know, it took a while to catch on to anything he was saying. <laughs> it just... So we had that class, and then we had... Um, we had uh, a sewing class and uh, a cooking class. Um, there were maids in the school um, that, uh, you know, did the cooking and in, in for the dining room. We had a, um, um, let's see, we had, a, we had some cooking class. And so the, the, the family taught the classes for the most part, except we had that English teacher from Wales, and I'm trying to think, I think he was the only outside teacher. Everybody else was a family member, okay? And, um, and of course, we took French. You know, we had a French class, and we were taking that. And, um, which was bad. So, I, when I signed up for classes, I pretty much, I didn't have to do anything if I didn't want to. I mean, technically. I mean, I had to, I had to sign up for enough where I could, it, you know, graduate from American high school. I think there was some sort of deal with that that they promised my parents that if I, if I, you know, was in doing this, that the, the, the it would be the you know I could could go back to an American high school and you know not flunk out or something, right? So um, anyhow, so I took a lot of classes because. I did. I took pretty much everything they had offered that I could fit into my busy little day, because there was you. You, you were stuck there anyway, right? And I and I say this in the nicest way. You were you were stuck there, and um, uh, anyhow. So um, I, you know, there was nothing really to do, such for computers and cell phones. It's just, you know, I think about the kids today going, oh, I'm bored, really? You don't have any idea what bored is. And, of course, the kids were interesting. You know, it was interesting to talk to. Oh, we had some kids from Sweden, uh, too. And um, as I think about that, there was girls from Sweden. And um, 
Now, it was interesting. We didn't have anybody that didn't speak English. All the kids spoke English. I don't know if that was a prerequisite to come there, but they all spoke English, regardless of what other language they spoke. Like even the girl from Greece um, spoke English. We've talked about her before, but uh, yeah, she did. She spoke English. And then we had... Um, um, so in our classes, we, like the French class was in France, French, and the cooking class was in France, French, and we had to take notes. You could ask questions and you might get answers in English. Um, but I can remember, for instance, and language, you know, they say that languages, uh, children that are fortunate enough to grow up in a multilingual household um, can pick up languages easily, if they're, particularly if they're, they get it when they're a baby, okay? But the reason some people have trouble with languages, one of the reasons is that as a child, they didn't get that, that didn't get formed in their brain. I'm going to dry some more, okay? How's our story going so far, John? Oh, I love, love the story. So, back to this boarding school in Switzerland. Exile. Exile, being ex exiled to Switzerland. So, uh, my sister was in college in Colorado, going to school in Colorado, University of, at Boulder. And we, we wrote letters and stuff. They actually had something called airmail stamps that you bought in those days. That they, and something otherwise, they call, something they called airmail stamps. Uh, airmail stamps. Well, those are, people never heard of that. <clears throat> if you were born today, you would have no clue what I'm talking about. Airmail stamps. So, even in the United States, if you wanted someone to get the letter by the end of the week, at least, you did. You sent an airmail. If you sent a regular wagon train post or whatever it was, right? Um, uh, the letter just went by truck, and the mail just went by truck and 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 car and ship. So somebody might not get a letter for you know for weeks if you sent it if you didn't use an airmail stamp. Of course, they were more expensive, and all the countries had them. Okay, airmail stamps. So uh, we would, you know, and then there was no telephoning. It was way too expensive to phone anybody, okay? So you were not going to be able to phone a soul um, at all. Just, uh, that was just um, not happening. So you really were just sort of, uh, talk about, you really were isolated. Um, you, you get a few letters, and I appreciated the letters, you know. And um, there was, with, there were no activities at the school, like, like after class or anything. They, they didn't have like a, you know, a game you could go play or, you know, rec room or anything like that. It's just after dinner, um, you, you, you could go, um, maybe visit some friends for a little bit, but um, mostly you were um, just in your room reading a book or whatever, right? That's, that's how that worked. So anyhow, that, that, like I say, there wasn't a, wasn't a lot to do. And then of course you had homework too, you know. Um, dinner started uh, at Dinner was an interesting experience with that. This our the the, the families we called them. Um, where's my chalkboard? This is kind of fun. We'll just take a minute and explain this. I like story time. I can explain things. Um, see, I need a tub of towels here because I it just it helps you to you know appreciate how it was with this dining room and the and the.
Let me just clear off the chalkboard here. Um, I've had this chalkboard like for like 10 years. It was like a little cheap thing I got on Amazon. It still works though, doesn't it, John? Absolutely. You know, just sort of the, um, what have I got here? Uh, this is, no, that doesn't show up. I need a white pencil, yeah? Here. So the dining room was like this. There was a window back here. And there was a long table here where the family sat and everybody else, the tables were like this. It was like Harry Potter. Yeah. All right. Now, what was fun, and then the, the, there was a door here where the help came in and brought the food, okay? Now, if you wanted um, orange juice, uh, fresh orange juice, you could have that, but your parents got charged for that for <laughs> breakfast. And then if you wanted milk, because uh, Europeans didn't drink milk. So if you wanted milk, that was considered extra. Soda, of course, wasn't ever offered. <laughs> there was no, couldn't have so a soda. So what did you serve your wine? Yeah, so, but whatever we had for dinner, the, um, the family ate something else. So they, they didn't have their own dining room. They ate with us, but they were eating all kinds of wonderful foods that we never saw. That doesn't seem fair. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting about what, you know, what can kids consider fair. And quite frankly, that sort of pissed me off. You know what I mean? I think, because, you know what I mean? Like, for instance, if you, had a, if you went to someone's house, when I was growing up, if you went to somebody's house and they came to your house and, and you decided to have a snack, you couldn't eat in front of them if you didn't have snack for them too, right? Isn't that kind of the, how it works? Well, you yeah. know. So, uh, you know, the fact that they were... Um, that they, they did that was uh, <clears throat> uh, kind of mean, right? But that, that's what they did, okay? And, they, and, they, and so each, each course started with soup, some sort of cream soup. And they had, they served, they had bread, but it was unsalted butter. And in America, as we don't, you know, John hates, I, I've gone to, grown to like it. But, you know, back then, you know, it was just, oh, my gosh, what is this stuff, right? So, anyway, we had, like I say, we had the unsalted butter. And then we started with soup. And then there was a meat dish. And it was unclear to me whether or not we were eating horse meat. Um, you know, and having, you know, having a, having a horse at home and, uh, you know, what, and the reason I suspected that is because in one of my daily walks uh, into the village, I walked by a butcher shop, and in the window was a horse's head. Well, just the meat part of it, you know, and the skull. That, and I'm I'm going, what what is that? And um, that's what that was. I know you're going, oh my gosh, Ginger, surely not. And I'm going, surely yes, right. Surely this was the deal, right? So, uh, the, the, you, you couldn't really say much about the food. Uh, it really wasn't very good. But in cooking class, we made some of the food that um, we had for dinner, or at least some of the, some of the um, sometimes we made it for the table, what we called the big table, which was where those people were. Okay, so um, I don't know that we got to eat it. So I remember taking cooking class and having, it was in French and I had to write notes. And I just found the whole thing just disturbingly boring. And I took the cooking class, because remember I was taking everything, but, um, because I've, you know, taken everything. And <clears throat> uh, at first I tried to complain a little bit to my parents about the school. and. And their thing, their thing was, was always was, just tell people you went to boarding school in Switzerland. Don't give them the details, and they'll be so impressed. Okay. 
And I guess there's some truth to that, isn't there? I mean, you know, there might be a little truth to that. So anyhow, the, um, so the food wasn't much, but I did get the, um, I did, ma did manage to get, uh, I was a big milk drinker in those days, and um, not now, I wouldn't touch the stuff, but back then, that was just one of my things. So I had milk and orange juice, and that was nice for breakfast. I could um, be pretty certain of the quality of that. And then on Saturdays, we had a half day. We, we had Saturday, we had a half day of school, and then we could go to town. And the town was really kind of neat. There were lots of little, uh, there were like the little restaurants and stuff, and um, you could go uh, shopping and, um, uh, and this, uh, you know, they had, they had candy shops with real Swiss chocolate, right? You could go in there, and I had a pretty good allowance. You could go in there and you could get, like, um, you know, kind of neat candy bars and, um, and, and really good, good chocolate. So we did a few excursions. That's not to be fair. The school, I remember the school taking us on an excursion. Of course, you, if you wanted to go on an excursion, you had to pay extra. So they came up with some excursions for sure. And um, <laughs> uh, I remember going to a, 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 visiting this chocolate uh, shop in um, um, uh, Switzerland. And we, we had a tour of the factory. And then, bless their hearts, they let us, um, they gave us 10, 10 minutes in a room full of different kinds of chocolate that this company made to gobble as much as down as we could. Um, sounds like a good idea in theory. Everybody got real sick from, from that because everybody, I mean, you're 15. Someone says, here, how about the chocolate you ever wanted to eat in your whole life? But we'll give it to you in 10 minutes, right? Yeah, how did you think that was going to go? <laughs> Just, but um, that didn't turn me off of chocolate by any means. And of course, you know, you bring home chocolate and stuff and stuff it in your room and stuff like that. But um, it was interesting that when anybody got sick at the school from their food, which happened quite often, people would get sick, um, the headmistress would come in, the owner of the school, she would come in and say, just, just, just too much chocolate. You were out, too much chocolate. And she, she never would acknowledge that anybody got food poisoning uh, from her school. Just wasn't going to happen, yeah? So anyhow, um, and so Tracy and I and, and, this, and her friend, I can't think of the other girl's name now, it's been too many years, but um, we did have um, a really good relationship and we had a lot of fun together and we'd go out. But now on Sundays, uh, you know, they found out what everybody's church was and then you had to go to that church. Well, I did that once, and it was um, Episcopalian Church, and it was in French. And, and, and it was bad enough having to go at home on, and when it was in English, but the, you know, French was just too much. And so the first thing I did was forge a note from my parents that I was, that I was not, not required to attend church. And you know, they, they weren't going to risk a, you, you know, spend the money on an airmail stamp to ask if that was true. You know what I mean? Okay, they didn't care. So when everybody else was going to church, I was out. And of course, I got, I, I got the same thing with Tracy. I got Tracy was also, and I were born in the same religion. So I got her to do it too. Okay. So <laughs> Tracy and I, um, I think the other girl didn't do it. She wouldn't do it. She was really Dudley do right. She was not going to forge a note and upset her parents and risk getting kicked out and on and on. She had all these reasons why she couldn't misbehave. And we're going, okay, you know, just fine, whatever. Don't, you know, it's, it's all right. Don't do it. Um, so she didn't do it, but we were more than willing to do it. And. So that was our, um, so on Sundays then, we'd go to restaurants and, and do stuff and just wander around the town and take tours. And so the Sundays became 
something to really look forward to because we had the whole day off. We didn't have to be back. And once they turned us loose in the town, they didn't worry about it. We were unchaperoned. Once they, and I don't know if the, the parents of the girls from South America understood that because they were like 18, 19, right? Their hormones were in full blast. And I'm not, I don't think their parents uh, really considered that that might have happened, okay? But they had full run of the, um, you know, the town. Um, my parents never asked what I did. They didn't really care. Just sent some letters. As long as I didn't send anything too upsetting, they were all good, right? Nobody cared. So Thanksgiving came, and my mother, I didn't mention, I mentioned that my mother, after she, um, after I paid for her airfare to escort me to Switzerland out of the trust fund, uh, nobody's bitter here, are we? Then she, um, she went to, uh, to Spain to paint, and she went to Mallorca. Took, uh, she was an artist. She went to Mallorca, took some art lessons, and she went, she went to paint. So it wasn't that hard to get a letter to her because she was in Spain, not America. So my dad was coming over to visit see her for Thanksgiving. Um, he, he was a, a superior court judge, and he got two months off every year anywhere, and you know he could take some vacation time. He was like the, one of the head guys. And incidentally, on the side note, he was the, the youngest judge on the Nuremberg trials after World War II. Okay, so they'd been to Europe before. And um, so he was uh, scheduled to come see everybody. And um, so what we needed was Thanksgiving off. Now, the school didn't recognize our holiday. So Tracy and I put a very um, convincing argument that this was, you know, practically a religious holiday for us. And what do you mean you don't thank Thanksgiving? And we do. And because we had this chance to go see my mom in, um, in Spain, and her parents were willing to pay. Um, and so the three of us together um, got on a you know, little airplane, and uh, we visited, went to see my mom in Spain, in, uh, in, in Mallorca, for Thanksgiving. I'm not, not sure if that is in a story for another day, but we had a good time. Uh, that's what we did. We went, we went to see her. And then my dad flew in later. And because um, we, we went there a little early. And, and Tracy was 16 and had a driver's license. So my mom rented us a car. <laughs> Are you with, with, ready for that? Well, I probably how, how paid for you? it. I was uh, just not quite 16, and Tracy was 16. And mom rented us a car. And we went and saw stuff, and sometimes my mother was with us, and sometimes not. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's just interesting, isn't it? Yes. So <clears throat> you're going, wow. How'd that even work? You know, just I don't know, but that's what it, we did. So we got back from from Spain, and had, actually, the three of us had a really good time. That was fond memories of that. Um, my mom and I, of course, were fighting, um, as usual. Fight? And I can re remember, and one of the things that John will tell you is that I zone out. If I'm thinking about something, you, you might as well not be in the room. I just have had a lifelong habit of zoning out. And I remember sitting in sp at dinner in, in Spain, with my dad, my mom, and Tracy and them, and mother's saying something, and I'm not reacting. And uh, she said something like, come to the party, Ginger. See, it's just funny how you remember stuff. And I'm going, what party? Are we having a party? And, you know, I think she threw something at me at dinner. It's probably what I remember. She probably threw a glass of water at me. She, was, she liked to do that when you went out to dinner. Either heave the water at me or the waiters or somebody got it, right? <laughs> just, you had to be quick. <laughs> you had to be quick. So, so, oh, my gosh, you guys, it was just... 
so crazy. Those were crazy times. So anyway, we so Tracy and I, so we 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 got back from that and then do you remember when the Cuban can you ask Google when the Cuban missile crisis happened? What 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 month? John will tell you, and then I can tell you, I can tell you the story in the context of that. So this, if you're joining us late, this is, the title of this story is... October of 1962. October, so it was, it was before Thanksgiving, was it before Thanksgiving? Yes, they, they, Thanksgiving's been in November for quite a while now. Yeah, it's just so true. They haven't moved it. Okay. So we got a sense of who everybody's parents were. My mother was in, um, was in Spain painting. And my dad was, of course, in Washington State. And we, the Russians had invaded Cuba or sent them missiles or something because they didn't invade it. They just sent them some missiles. And there was a feeling at the time that the world was on the brink of World War III. It was very strong. And, uh, and we got probably different, different information than the Americans got in, in their papers that, than we did in Switzerland, okay? Got totally different information because, um, you know, that's something that I've noticed even from living over there in France with Cinnamon um, is that they're... The, the information that their news gives is not the same stuff as what uh, we do. They just uh, they tell different news or a different side of the news or it's just different news. So we were um, extremely worried that, um, that we really were going to go into a big war with um, World War. And we weren't sure that we wanted to stay in Switzerland anymore. Tracy and I and her friend, I think Diana, that was her name, knew it would come to me. Diana, she, um, we decided that we wanted to come home. We should fly home. If, this, if the world was on fire, man, we wanted to come home. That was it. So um, everybody was allowed to call home. Uh, well, you had to pay for it, but you could call. So that was that was that was allowed. I got to dry, so we'll just continue on with the story. Perhaps John, you would take a moment and. I can't do anything when you're drying, boss. <laughs> oh, okay. Just dry. So I just want to take a moment to say that for those of you who have joined us uh, late, this is our story time Fly on the Wall series. You're in my studio. These paintings have been commissioned by uh, students that attend our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting and <coughs> is either red or purple m members. And if you, we were running a uh, thing we've never done before, but if you signed up at, for, as an annual member, renewed your membership early even, if, for instance, suppose your membership normally ends in, say, March or April or June even, if you want to go ahead and re renew it, we will uh, we'll count, you know, of course, you, everything that you paid for, you still get those months. And then um, every, there are uh, commission paintings that we're, we're doing that, that go with the rest of it. So let's see. John, can you come plug in my um, uh, iPad again, please? It just, I didn't, re it didn't get replugged in from yesterday. It just told me I have a low battery. So anyway, so what we're doing now is that this is a painting. It's an 8 by 10. This is a, a purple member signed up for one year, renewed their membership early, or just renewed it in, um, um, in regular time. In their regular time slot, but they renewed it. And um, because they did, they're getting... Um, 
they will get an 8 by 10 painting. Now, if they had renewed for two years, they would be getting a, um, a 9 by 12, and then the 12 by 16s are uh, for people that have um, renewed for three years. So, um, and if you're just a monthly member, some, one of the monthly member subs, don't we um, uh, get anything for being a monthly member? Well, you know, a monthly member, red member, for under $50 a month, you get access to, you know, hundreds of videos, new ones every month, and free art coaching. So it was a great deal before we did anything, right? And we just, um, we need to replace some equipment. We need to just can't catch up a little bit financially, and this helps John and I do that. And... Um, and, it, and so we wanted to make it work. It helped everybody, right? Would you say that's a good assessment, yeah, John? Yeah, absolutely. So that's, win, that's win why we're doing anybody. this. So I've got about 45 paintings to 50. do. How many? 50. I have over 50 to paintings to do now. And um, we just thought we would do the Fly in the Wild Story Challenge. I could sit alone in my studio and not talk to you and guys. And I have to listen to the stories. And then John gets to listen to the stories, or, or, or. Or we can share them with you folks. Right, we can share them with you. And so I wrote a list of all the things that have happened to me in the past. A lot of people said, oh, I love your stories. You should tell them. So, and maybe some of the early, early videos we did on YouTube, there's still some. Like, for instance, uh, if you want to know, a, I did a story. If, look on my website, you guys are members, and look up lobster dinner, the lobster dinner. There's a story of how my mother, I may tell this on YouTube too later, but it's the story of how my mother tried to hook me up on the beach at Christmas <laughs> uh, at 15 with a, with a 19 year old boy and lied, about my, with that. and lied about my age so they'd take me out. Not understanding that um, for my virginity was on the line and nobody thought about that, right? But anyway, that's a different. That's a fun story too. So for those who are our Academy members, that's the lobster dinner video that tells about that. And that's a pretty good video too. And uh, I can't, you know, that's a good story in itself. But that was back when I, because at Christmas time, don't 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 deviate off the exile in Switzerland. Well, I'm still in, in Switzerland, okay. right? Still in Switzerland. Switzerland. At, at that Christmas, we um, we. Uh, my mother had, we'd go, uh, they got a hotel in, um, Torre Molinas, France, Spain, and, uh, we, and, we, and I had a month off for Christmas, and so I, I met my parents in, in uh, Spain, in uh, Torre Molinas, and that's another story, but th that will be a different chapter. But anyway, so we talked about the Cuban mi Missile Crisis, so, and before we went to break, and um, so ch we all took a moment to, it, it was a little bit like Chicken Little and the fly is, you know, the sky is falling kind of thing. It really felt like that to us. You don't know. I mean, I lived at a time, and you got to, maybe you guys can appreciate this. I lived at a time when I no longer gave a rip. I did my granddaughter can tell you at, at, at eight, she could tell you everything that was going on at the news and how bad the world is, and she knows all that stuff. I've just found the news to be in, uninteresting, and I never watched it or paid attention to the news or anything to the news. So at the point where um, the news is brought to my attention as a kid, and I'm over in Switzerland and talking about World War III, um, I'm very alarmed, yes? You can appreciate that, right? I am extremely alarmed. And so um, I call my dad and the, the school, I remember going into the, the principal's office and um, uh, calling my dad and uh, her sitting there, you know, dialing the number and of course, you know, they were gonna get charged for the bill. And, you know, saying, oh my God, I can't believe it, we're gonna be at war and um, I need to come home. And my dad said, uh, right now, you are so safe where you are. If anything happened, because I wanted to be with my family, right? He said, we'll send the family. The family would come to you. You would not come to the family, right? Uh, we'd come over there. He says, I'd come to you and your mom. And, you know, I'd, I'd come over there. You're okay. Okay? That's, that's what he said. 
So, and Diane's mother, she, Diane, Diane, Diane wasn't allowed to call home. They weren't going to pay for that phone call. They could barely make the bills for the school, so the school wouldn't even let her phone anybody, as I recall. They, there was no phone call. She didn't get a phone call. But Tracy, on the other hand, got to call, call her mother and father. And their reaction was so different. Now, you have to understand that her family was so rich. I mean, we weren't doing badly, right, with our little trust fund. But these guys were so rich that for her birthday, they thought a nice present was a forest. She got a real a, fo a forest. She got a, a real forest. forest. Yeah, like thousands of acres of trees. Well, and, that's a perfect it, gift. And and uh, not, nothing she particularly wanted, but she sure got that forest, right? <laughs> just you think I make this stuff up? Really, honest to God, she got a forest, and nobody thought that was odd. And I don't um, like to have a forest. Her her um, parents are just her her. Her, her uncle, you know, I'd seen her uncle was on the news, a, a politician, and um, her family was very high connected. I think they were probably, yeah, Republicans, very high connected Republicans. And um, <sighs> we've got to keep painting here. So anyway, so Tracy's parents screamed at her for calling and bothering them. And didn't want to hear any more crap about the war and that she was out of her mind. She didn't know what the hell she was talking about and never phone again kind of thing. She left the phone call just in sobbing and tears. Right? And I thought at least, at least my dad, of course I hadn't tried to call my mother, at least my dad had been understanding, right? And had been very nice about it. So and then, uh, of course, then we saw, I saw him later. And of course, it passed, and then we, I saw him later, and, and you know, back in, on Thanksgiving, and then uh, that Christmas. So then the um, that's got to dry. So I'll change brushes. So those of you who find this painting very interesting, and would like to learn to paint. We highly suggest that you look up acrylic painting with Ginger Cook. We do do step-by-step -step tutorials. You can send your artwork into me for personal art coaching where I will make suggestions. Nobody starts off. It's not so easy. I had somebody write us the other day, and they, they wrote us and they said that somebody had recommended us, one of the, Mark Kessler, one of John's, uh, and my old, old friends. Well, friend's kind of a loose word, but somebody we know anyway and used to work with. I think we lost the friendship there some time ago. But that's another story. Um, anyhow, he would said that he, he, he wanted to learn to paint. He thought he could maybe, he wanted to paint photorealism. He thought maybe he could do it in a year. <laughs> I'm like, come on, you guys. Thought maybe he could do it in a year. And, um, uh, and then he wanted, what did he want, John, a book on? He wanted to have a book on how to do it. A book on how to do it. And, if, you know, if it was that easy, you know, we wouldn't bother with art museums. You know, <laughs> I mean, there is some skill involved in this, and it, it doesn't happen overnight. For those of you who, you know, some of you went the other day, so I'm not keeping up with other artists. There is no thing as keeping up with another artist. Your skill, you may be wonderful, say, at Impressionism and suck at photorealism or some other cyber abstracts. And this has... Just because one person can do one style of painting doesn't mean they can do another style, right? And yeah, also, it's a, you have to understand all the brush moves and stuff. It's just, um, you know, I've been painting with acrylics since I was 17 years old, right? Now, I share with you how I do it, and I do that in these videos that we have, step-by-step -step videos, and we have some on YouTube also. And... Um, because we understand that that's what people want to learn to t learn, learn to paint, but it is not it's not a freebie overnight thing, right? It just doesn't happen that way, yes. And um, the idea that you think that it ought to, it, it, you know, or some people think that it ought to, is kind of weird to me. Because uh, I wouldn't expect to be a concert pianist uh, with a couple of YouTube videos, <laughs> and. and um, and an art teacher coming by once in a while. 
But, you know, I could probably, um, you know, learn to play some popular songs if I took piano lessons. Nobody expects to be great all at once. I guess that's what I'm saying. So anyway, back to the, back to the boarding school, being exiled to boarding school in Switzerland. Now, I would like to tell you that Tracy and I the, we're lifelong friends after this. That when we when I got back to Seattle and she went on with her life, that um, that we that we were. And uh, sadly, that was not the case. We we lost touch. We we kept in touch. She came to visit me that summer. Um, but after that, like I say, we lost we lost touch. Um, Which happens. And it happens, right? But um, so, some years later, when I was in um, living in Aspen, and um, she had moved to, she had married and moved to um, Telluride or something, or Ure. Anyway, she, she had been on a hiking trip and found out where I lived and came and visited me, and that's the last time I ever saw her. But, um, you know, she had a son. And I can't remember. She'd been already been divorced once. I can't remember. So I was about, probably about 21 at the time. Uh, anyway, so back to back to boarding school in Switzerland. Yes. So we had. Um, a, a, as promised on the brochure, there was in fact. A. Um, um, a, a chalet in the mountains. So um, there was. They hired a bus, and we up in, and and we had school in the mornings, and then we had um, um, uh, we skied in the afternoons, several days a week. I can't remember that many. But um, we would actually ski down from our chalet in the mountains um, to the um, where we would pick up the chairlift and the and the and the and the instructors. And that was really fun. I got to say that was really fun. Tracy had the other thing I forgot to mention. Tracy had been at that school the year before. So she knew a lot of the ins and outs of things that I didn't know. Okay. So she had, this was her second year at that boarding school. And so she kind of knew stuff that, you know, the other kids didn't. I got to dry. So uh, this wasn't the only, that was just, you know how people, certain things are tradition in certain areas. There were a ton of boarding schools in Switzerland. Um, uh, you remember those actor Nivens, the English actor Nivens, I think he was the Pink Panther. Oh, yeah. You know him? Yeah. Well, his son, son, son was at one of these boarding schools. And there were definitely a um, there was definitely a boarding school culture there, okay. And th th so when after school and after ski class, or you know when the ski class was over, we were dropped off in town, or we no we skied down to town. We could ski down to town, okay. And then what we did was we um, went to these nightclubs. There was this nightclub there for kids, and it was <laughs> it just is shocking, isn't it? And <laughs> just and we went and dancing. And and they they served alcohol, and uh, you know if we had an allowance, we could buy it. So we nobody said anything. I don't know if I was drinking or not, but nobody said anything if I'd wanted to, right? And 
all the kids from all the different boarding schools were there dancing. And, you know, wonderful music and and then to get, come back, <coughs> we had to be back to the school by like, um, like kind of like Cinderella. We had to be back to the school at certain times. So then what we would chip, we'd pool our money together and we would take a taxi and then ride back up the mountain to the school. And you're going, wow, no kidding. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. That's what we did. Did you get an education at all while you were there? Well, other than life experiences, any book learning? Well, that's funny you should ask that. <laughs> um, Just me. Uh, um, I I probably didn't learn any cooking skills. I'm pretty sure, uh, you know. And I hated all their food anyway, so I just I had no interest in cooking it, right? We weren't making desserts or cookies. I thought the stuff was disgusting. And I had taken some cooking in ninth grade at Home Ec in, um, in Washington, so I kind of knew a little bit about it anyway, and I knew how to read a cookbook, but this, their stuff was, oh, my God, no. And um, and let's see, I, oh, I learned, oh, I know. Our, our, our English teacher was also our history teacher, but we didn't... Um, we didn't get the American history, like, you know, they go on. They start with George Washington in the first grade, and they continue with George Washington in infinium and in infantitum. And you, um, but there I learned about the Protestant, rest, uh, rest, uh, Protestant, what do they call it? Uh, I'll think about it in a minute, where um, the, there were papal, you know, the Protestant religion came to be, and, um, and I learned, Eng I le your, your European history, yeah. Pro Protestant Reformation, that's what, what I'm looking for, the word I'm looking for, yeah. So yeah, absolutely, John, I did learn some of that. And then, um, and of course I read a lot. It just, there wasn't a lot to do, and I'm a big book reader. And um, I remember, um, uh, th th my parents didn't censor books, but like, for instance, uh, the, like the book Lolita was banned in the United States, but I could read it in Switzerland because we could read books there like that, right? And I remember I, another story that will happen on another episode. I had this, uh, over Christmas, I made up, I had this boyfriend, um, and he spoke English as a college student. And I remember asking him what the word, I was reading a book, and I asked him what the word brothel meant. And of course, you know, he explained it was a whorehouse. I knew what a whorehouse was. I just never heard the term brothel. But it was, I was appalled that he had better vocabulary than I did. And Ooh. one of the, my boyfriend, the, my French, no my, Italian, my um, Spanish boyfriend. And it, the other thing that kind of bugged me too was that um, what I was learning was learning to speak French. And we had to do one of the things that the teacher had us do, which was the daughter of one of the owners, of the owner. Uh, had us uh, write big, long vocabulary lists, okay? And then and what the definition was in French. Right, so I'd write a word, and then in French I'd write the definition, and then I would say to her, because she spoke English, so that's cool, what does this word mean in English? Now, not understanding, it, it, you'd think I would have, but I really didn't understand that she didn't know because she didn't, her English wasn't that great, right? Does it make sense? But she said there's no such word in English. And then I said to her, <laughs> there can't be any word. If there's no word in English, there is no word. Now, I know that's a little <laughs> just. <laughs> there's no word then. I'm sorry. I don't recognize this as any meaning anything because I don't have an English equivalent. Now, of course, there's all kinds of words, you know, like the Eskimos, Inuits in, um, in Norway and stuff, have like, I don't know, 17 different words for snow. And, you know, since, I, of course, I know that. But at the time... I just was so offended that there were no words in English. I mean, I couldn't believe it. No words in English. How is that possible? No words, right? So, um, so I learned a little French, and I and I didn't learn sewing either. Um, I started with a sewing. Uh, oh, I took crocheting too, knitting. 
I think, I, and I got all the stuff, and I got some sewing projects. That was one of our, you know, electives. And then um, I ended up paying one of the maids in the kitchen to finish my project for me because I had no idea how to finish it. <laughs> I know. I was a very bad So basically, student. you learned how to work the system. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's oh, what yeah. I'm taking away from this. Yes. I learned how to work the system. And um, I know that's so shocking, isn't it? <laughs> And, like, for instance, I, Tracy would always come up with ideas of stuff she wanted to do that was against the school rules. And I never came, you know, I was never a, really a rule breaker per se. You know, I would break rules, but it didn't, I didn't sit up at night thinking about how I was going to break them either, right? But um, if Tracy wanted to do something... I figured out how I was the planner. I was the you know the the the, the partner in crime on how you were, we were actually going to get away with it, how we were actually going to do it. That's what I did. That was sort of my claim to fame was that you come up with the plan, uh, what you want to do. I'll make the plan and we'll execute it, kind of thing, right? So, um, uh, for instance, like when we got back from boarding school in Switzerland. Uh, not by boarding school. We got back from the the chalet uh, up in the mountains, and it was springtime now, and we were home. Um, <clears throat> looking for this color here. Um, Tracy, we, we, Tracy still wanted to go skiing, <clears throat> so we had met these these guys. Um, uh, when, when we were, when everybody else was at church and we were wandering around a Montreux on a Sunday, and um, <clears throat> we met these guys, uh, two two boys, that seemed very cute, and they were skiers, and um, so we made arrangements to go skiing with them, and sneak out of the school, and go skiing with them. Anyway. So the trick was, <coughs> sorry, um, the trick was we had to be able to sneak out, be gone for the day, and get back before anybody caught on we weren't around, which is no easy task, man. I'm telling you right that. That's a, not an easy thing to do, but we did it. So anyway, I remember getting out the back door by the kitchen so the maids didn't see us. And, and here was the thing. In Switzerland had it, unlike the United States, in Switzerland, if an adult, any adult saw any child doing anything wrong, they were allowed to hit them and nobody could say boo. They could chastise them, hit them, whatever, okay? Um, just got to put some colors out here. So anyway, we, we made it. We met them. Somehow we met them outside the school. They picked us up. <laughs> we went skiing, which was fun. And then I remember Tracy falling down and almost breaking her leg. And I had not planned for anybody getting hurt. I had no backup plan for what happens if somebody got hurt. You know what I mean? Because then we would have been in big time trouble, yeah? Uh, just again, no backup plan, but fortunately I can re report that we made it back to the school unharmed and we never saw those boys again and it, um, uh, that's what we did, okay? I'm drying. And we had some, I took art too, I took painting and art, that was the other thing I took. And the, the, um, the, the lady that taught us English that was the, 
uh, in French and all that. She also was the art teacher because it was men. The kids, the, 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 the ladies' kids all worked in the school and they, later they took over and became, you know, when they, they kept the school going, right? So she was also my art teacher. And she was extremely impressed with the kind of art I was doing at so early in age. And she got me to, um, she wanted me to look at an art school in Switzerland that uh, was extreme, was really famous. And um, she, uh, we went on a special trip. Now I'm sure that the, my parents paid for it. These people didn't do anything for free. There was no out of the goodness of their heart, let's do this, right? I never saw that. But she was very encouraging. And she thought there was a school, Le Col de Beaux Arts in Switzerland has, um, it's just for you know artists, and you normally have to have two years of college to go. And she submitted some of my artwork to them that I'd done in class that she was so impressed with. And so, and then we actually took the train to Lausanne and met the um, and and met the, uh, the I, I met with the school and um, talked about the, me attending that school that next fall. Okay. And then I remember we we had lunch at she had some friends and um, we didn't eat at a restaurant or anything. We had she had some family or something in Lausanne, and we stayed we stopped at their house. And had um, and had lunch, and uh, the little side note on that was that you know, you know what was it my mother used to say? What in Rome do as the Romans? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, I know that that sounds great in person, but you know what? The Romans had some strange habits, and you may not want to exactly do that. But um, um, anyway, we. Um, had lunch that they eat their salad after last. Salad comes last, which of course in America we eat the salad first. Not a criticism, just people do stuff differently. So those of you who haven't might find that interesting. I, I found I'm just going, wow, this is weird. Because I don't particularly like salad anyway, whether you eat it first or last, so it didn't really matter when they ate it, wasn't eating it, but they didn't serve horse meat for lunch was a good thing. You know, appreciated the fact that we had like food I, I'd heard of, right? So I know I sound very facetious, don't I? But that's what comes with, you know, broadening your education. Yes? And um, which is, of course, what going to a school, school like that does. And I got into the school. I was accepted. I got into the school. Um, you know, it wasn't on a full scholarship or anything, but I got the fact that they accepted me was interesting, because um, they normally wouldn't have. And so my parents, who had the judgment of snails, um, which literally means no judgment at all, uh, were all excited because my mother, you know, painted and everything. She was all excited. She could brag to her friends, I guess, that I was at a fancy art college in, in Europe because of my skills. And so they said that they would, of course using my trust fund money, they would buy me a chalet in Switzerland, Lausanne, and, and then my sister could, could come over with me, and I don't know what she was supposed to do while I was there going to art school. Um, and I could go to art school in um, in Switzerland, uh, and wasn't that nifty. And I remember this. It took a few months for this to. Okay, they didn't. They wrote us later. I think I was already back in the states when, when they made this offer. But what's funny to me is that they didn't understand that a 16-year-old kid. By this time, I had already. Um, on, on spring break, I had already snuck out of the school and um, told my parents that I was um, going to um, 
to Spain with the, no to Italy with some uh, some other schoolmates and their parents who, and um, of course and then some of the kids were going to Italy, and we bought some Italian postcards that they could mail for me, to my parents from Italy. And then I told the school, I was going to Germany. To see my brother, who was stationed over there in the military, okay. And then, I packed my bags, and I went by myself to uh, back to uh, Torre Molinas to see my boyfriend, who I met, who I'd made friends with on Christmas, during Christmas break, okay. And live with him, in his house, and all that entailed. <laughs> and how old were you? Just turned 16. Mm -hmm. So the idea that they, they thought it was a good idea to have me go to a school by myself in Europe, art school, and assume I was going to get to class in time. And I remember, I couldn't speak French with crap. And the, and the lessons were all going to be in French, right? I mean, I was learning, but I, my French sucked, right, big time. Well, I really didn't want to learn it, let's face it. I really didn't want to know French, okay? I didn't. I just did not want to know French. And so I couldn't imagine how I was going to get through the first lecture. The first day, I wouldn't understand what the assignment was, and that would be the end of that. But, you see, nobody asked me either whether I thought this was a good idea. They just, you know, the school wrote them and said, she's been accepted, this is a huge honor, blah, 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 blah. Don't you think it would be wonderful if she did this? And so, honestly, I had a little common sense, not a lot, but I had a little common sense. And I said no, I wasn't going to do that. But it was interesting to me that those guys thought that was just a wonderful idea. Don't you think, John? I do. So you just, so, that's. So that's, a, that's a path not taken. It would be one of those cases, what uh, if? Yeah, what if, what if I'd gone there, you know what I mean? Uh, one of the things that the school did was apparently Kidnappings were big in Europe at that time, and they probably still are. And boarding school kids were often kidnapped and sold into sex as sex slaves to uh, the Far East, you know, or maybe, um, um, you know, like Arabian countries, places like that, you know, but people, places where people bought kids and never heard from again. And the school was aware of this, and so one of the things that they 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 tried to they they gave us a lecture on that before because we would go to the movies on Saturdays too, and one of the things that they told us to do was to be very wary of that and not go to the restroom with strangers. There was a story about a um, a lady that um, this older lady and she would sit by a, one of the kids and then um, say she needed to go to the restroom and she had a bad back and they mind helping her. And then the, never came, the kid never came back from the restroom because the other, you know, bad people were there and, um, and the kid was toast. Yeah? So, uh, yeah. So I, I was aware that that was, it was not a safe place to be, you know. Even, even going into, you know, going to Spain by myself and, and that's a, probably another story, but just a rough one is that my boyfriend and I made it like two days, three days maybe, and we had an enormous fight, and I moved out and um, rented a hotel room and stayed there, okay? Just, and then still hung out with him and his friends and hated him. And somehow I was just part of that group by that time. It's weird, another story, but, um, so yeah, um, when people say, you know, just you read my parents' book, *The Sword and the Gavel*, and uh, if you ever got a chance to read that, it's just their their recollections and mine were just so different, you know. 
but often that's the way it was. Um, if you asked Cinnamon, probably, about some of her times growing up, it would be different than my recollections. So I understand that's with all kids and even older siblings and stuff. When you a ask them um, what you know they remember or you know think about childhood and the same parents, they had a different experience. So this is, uh, like I say, often the case. But still, um, let's see. I just need some white here and mix some colors. The, uh, I didn't go, needless to say, to, to uh, school in uh, Lausanne, art school in Lausanne. Time to dry. And the school did do outings. Again, you had to, they, we had to pay for them, but there were outings. Like, um, they were big on taking us to the opera. And talk of, oh my God, talk about, a, oh my God, nobody hates music more than me. Oh my God, I just hated that. And I can remember sitting in with the girls, uh, Tracy and Diana, and we were sitting in our seats. and. Um, we got champagne, and, um, and why you? they were passing it around, man. So we had some. So we were pretty well cooked, but <laughs> just with the champagne. And um, uh, I can remember uh, the um, fun times of this um, being wildly uh, drunk at the opera. And, and clapping our hands really loud and laughing. Yeah, I know. And just finding it hilarious because otherwise the whole experience to me was extremely boring. And, um, but not, my parents would, would have of course paid for that because they went to the opera all the time of their whole adult th lives. They just loved it. And um, they took me when I was a kid at home a couple of times and I found it just, I, I I couldn't stand it is basically what it was. <laughs> Just couldn't stand it. I hated every minute of it. So, uh, and, and it, you know, and the one thing about it is that, you know, but so we did those outings, yeah. And we did, um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think and get some brushes here and do some other stuff. This is painting is taking longer than I thought. What time is it? John? It's, uh, you got a buck 33 in it. Okay, so it's not that long. It's no, just you're right on schedule. Not that long. It just feels like it's taking longer. Well, it's a, you know, you're being exiled. That's why. Yeah, it's being exiled. That's it. Um, yeah, for sure, B being exiled, yeah? So anyway, so we're, we did that. I mean, we, we did that, and then we, um, like I said, the chocolate factory, I remember, because that actually was a nice experience. Well, until I got really sick, but, you know, then you learn a lot, like, you know, there's a limit to how much chocolate you should eat at one time before you get sick. That's useful information. <laughs> everybody should, enough. everybody should know that, really. Um, so, you know, don't you think everybody should kind of understand, you know, understand yeah, what you, that would you, be? Yeah, you should definitely know your limitations, chocolate. Absolutely. <sighs> so,
So, and um, I discovered that um, I liked, up until that point, I never ate cheese. But I discovered ham sandwiches with mozzarella cheese in Switzerland and discovered that those were very delightful. And um, it became, a, and I discovered I liked pizza, which is interesting. I still didn't like other kinds of cheese, like Roquefort and all the rest of it, but certain cheeses were quite, quite nice, and I liked them. Um, um, so that was, a, you know, so we asked me what I learned in Switzerland. I guess we could, I hate to, you know, disillusion all our friends here. I guess I could talk about shoplifting. Well, it does have an interesting story. Yeah, well, one of the things, this sounds kind of hypocritical, but one of the things I decided was that I didn't like Switzerland. Not the countryside or the scenery or the skiing, but just in general. I thought everybody was kind of chicken shit. They just kind of hid out during the wars. I mean, this is this perception of a 15-year-old 15, 15 kid, right? And the, um, the, the school was, um, they were kind of cheats. Uh, the, my perception was I felt they were cheaty. And then they had all this, these paintings that they had, these real paintings of, you know, hanging on the wall of um, some pretty famous artists. And um, I don't know, somehow I got it into my head that, um, that they were, I don't know, I just didn't like them. So Tracy and I decided to take up shoplifting. Not because we didn't have money and could buy anything in the stores, because we did, this was not a money thing. This was sort of a screw you kind of thing. It was weird, right? So uh, I can remember going into a store and then taking, uh, I don't know, taking something. And, um, and then putting it in my purse or something and making it out with it. I think I did that like one time. And my friends from, I had some friends from Bahrain and she had found out that we'd done that, Tracy and I. Tracy, I don't, know what Tracy, I don't remember what Tracy took, but we took something. And she gave us hell. Really hell. Just made what, what we did sound so bad, which of course it was, and that she couldn't believe that we would do anything like that. And really gave us a pretty intense lecture on that whole activity. So I'm very grateful to her because we never did it again. We never got caught, but we never did it again. And we took out our aggressive behavior in other ways, but we didn't, we didn't resort to shoplifting again. We didn't do any of that. So, I mean, when you think about that, um, you ask about what you learn, learn in Switzerland. What you learn in Switzerland? You learn, I, I, you, you learn life skills. Yeah, and the thing of it was, John, is that I never would have shoplifted at home because my dad was a judge. I never would have done anything to get the family in trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, you know, just wouldn't have. But I think the problem was I knew better. That was the sad thing. Is I absolutely knew better. I knew it was wrong. And, and I got caught up on it, you know, got sucked into, you know, this will be fun, it'll be a lark. You know, who will find out? It'll be, we, you know, that kind of thing. And um, also Diane, my friend Diane was just, her, Tracy's friend Diane was appalled too. I mean, she, she could not believe, believe it either. So we, we you know, that was, a, that, my shoplift, shoplifting career was short-lived. Short -lived. I'm looking for Dawson in purple and not finding it. I took it away. I know I have it. Just do me a favor and just give me another tube of it. Uh, so another to, you think these things grow on trees? We have a whole stack of stuff. I just need some purple and I don't have time to look for it. And I'm on a roll here with my thinking. Um, 
sometimes I have an idea when I'm painting something and the things I do for you ah yes and mauve's not good enough no mauve is not good enough otherwise I would have said I have mauve what is the difference between mauve and Diane? And next Monday, maybe we'll talk about what the difference is between mauve and dazzling well, purple. Well, they're different purples. Well, then why was that's why it wasn't good <laughs> enough, fool? But just, just. But, but I don't want to hear it. Just. just I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I know. Got old Matisse here. I know I have it in there somewhere. I just couldn't find it. Well, I did. Thank you. That's some potent colors. Some good colors. Two of them open. So, um. You do this. This is drive me nuts, don't you? All right. So there's there's the um, getting getting to the point where the. You're gonna need a frame on that baby. Get to the point we're gonna need a frame soon. I just said that. I know, I'm just repeating it because you said a true thing, so I wanted to give you some validation since <laughs> the other stuff you said was so weird. It, it, I just, I felt you needed validating, but may, maybe not, right? I just, I don't know, I thought you did, maybe. I want my purple back. Well, you, what do you mean you took it back? Well, what am I going to do next time I want purple? Use the other two tubes that are already opened. Oh, okay. I could do that. What are you going to do? I could do that. So, uh, this is where, you know, people ask all the time about painting flowers, and if you just, if you're looking for you know, you have some families that want to give you something for Christmas. If you don't have all the pinks and reds and stuff, you don't need them, but it's nice to have them, particularly doing flowers, because anything you buy that's a color out of the tube is going to be stronger than anything you can mix. Just as a piece of trivia, right? That's a piece of, a piece of Just people, people may not realize that, but it's true. Yeah. Well, why wouldn't, you know? So, um, so if you want to subdue a, a color, you um, you know, you mix it if you want it more strong. Like like dazzling purple is really cause a glare on your painting too. It's another oh, big time, big time. Well, once it's varnished, everybody's safe. Oh yeah, the varnish will really bring it out too. Absolutely. Absolutely, varnish will bring it out. So yeah, back to Switzerland. So the other thing that happened when I was in boarding school in Switzerland and having a pretty good allowance besides trying to rob the place and learning to ski and how to sneak out, all those you know key things, was I discovered hair salons. And I had this um, a German hairdresser who spoke a little English no English, but she spoke a little French, and I spoke like less French. And I would go to her oh, every few weeks and have her color my hair. And I would get pictures out of magazines, because at that, that age, you just, you know, I want to look at the person in the magazine. I didn't understand that certain hair will do certain things, right? And 
if you want to, um, if you know, you have to have the you have to have the hair to begin with to be able to um, facilitate something like that, right? And let's see, is this wet? Let me just dry this real quick, and we'll talk about getting my doing my hair. So, one of the, uh, I would look in the magazines and I would see, you know, pictures and not understanding anything got airbrushed or not, even back then they could do that and, you know, that, that there, was, there wasn't real people exactly, they just, they were, but they kind of weren't. And I wanted to be those, I wanted to look like that, right? Well, who doesn't, right? So, I would go to the hair, I decided that I had, just mouse brown hair. Might have had a little blonde when I was a child, but by the time I grew up, it wasn't a brunette and it wasn't anything. My sister had beautiful, beautiful, she was a brunette, beautiful hair. Um, until all fell out, but she did it at the time she had it, okay? And um, so she, and I had this, you know, what I perceived as uh, crappy hair. So what, what I wanted was hair like in the magazine. So I would go in with these, um, these magazines that I'd found and, uh, and point to it and say, I want, I want, can you do that? And then she, so at one point I went platinum blonde. But the f first time I tried it, I think I was on vacation in Spain. That was when I was by myself. And um, the, when, they, when they put the, remember, it didn't speak the language of any of these people, right? So who knows what I said, but or me. anyway, they, the bleach was so strong that I had, I had uh, sores all over my scalp. I know. Can you imagine, right? So then... The, um, so when I went to my girl and she tried to repair the damage, so she would put a blonde streak in her. I'd say, can you do this or that? And then she'd go, no, you're going to. She was very, uh, she understood that I was a kid and didn't understand it. Just because I asked her to do something, she wouldn't. But some of the best my hair's ever looked in my, in my life was when she was doing it. She did, you know, in fact, it was, I had such a good haircut and such good hair when she was doing my hair that um, when I flew home that um, summer, uh, I spent the night in Lausanne and then caught the, caught the, caught the airplane out in the, in, uh, in the morning back to Seattle. I remember sleeping. Oh, I think I stayed up all night and didn't go to sleep because I didn't want to mess my hair up because I wanted my family to see how great my hair looked because I didn't think I could do it again. <laughs> Just. I know, just so crazy, John, right? No, it's, um, yeah. Well, the guys don't understand <laughs> that. Just, I know, you know, it's hard to understand. I, I get that, that that's hard to understand anybody do that, but, um, yeah, so. Anyway, um, Let's see, I need a smaller brush here. Think about this. Let's 
a different sort of scene, isn't it? It's nice for you. I remember one of the first things we, one of the things we did when we were in Switzerland, as part of the school, they took us up to the in the mountains. One of the first um, activities that we did with the school was they, we went um, up in the mountains and um, on chairlift and then hiked back down. I remember that doing that. That was back when I had good knees, and walking downhill was not particularly <laughs> going to be a tragedy. Not unlike like Donkey Hill. Not like Donkey Hill. And today. So, yeah, the. Um, It was interesting when I went to school meeting kids from all over the world. It, that was great. And um, these were life skills. Yeah, life skills. And I learned a lot about kids in different countries and what they what they were going through and their parents and and um, and then the kids said, you know, I discovered that the kids that uh, the girl from Mexico didn't have a donkey, and you know, I mean, you know, you can't believe the preconceived ideas people <laughs> have about others, and learning that that stuff is not, you know, not true, is pretty helpful, right? And uh, so you talk about the, you know, you talk, what did you learn in Switzerland? Well, you know, I learned the skills I learned in Switzerland made me a good car salesman. <laughs> okay, draw me that uh, diagram. Well, what did you learn in Switzerland to make you a good car salesman? Well, that's the car salesman joke, but you know, story, but you know, John. But um, I mean, I got to say, I'm going to have to say, glue to my computer to watch all these. Yeah. It certainly wasn't driving skills. <laughs> that one definitely was not driving skills. See what else I learned in school. You know, how to travel by myself, catch an airplane, not be afraid of travel. Right? Those were all good things. Yes and yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I still think about that airplane I took to Switzerland, uh, you know, from Switzerland to, to, to that spring vacation, and, you know, and had to climb up the stairs, and then there was no. Um, Oh, well, then I did, I guess another story is my time in, uh, with my boyfriend in, in, Spa in Spain during spring break and, and then my parents, um, meeting some friends of my parents um, who were not, um, and they could see I wasn't in Italy, because I'm sure they'd have told them, you know, oh, we saw your daughter in Tor Torremolinas, and they're thinking I'm in 
and how, how, how fast, I had to act fast to, to, to stop that from happening. And the only person who actually knew where I was when I took that vacation was um, my sister. I really felt somebody ought to know. Well, I think and, that's, you know, see, that's showing um, And she was so horrified. She never, turned, she never ratted me out, but, you know, that's, <laughs> but she was horrified that um, I did that. That just absolutely thought it was pretty awful. I was doing that. But then again, she's, uh, she was, uh, she was a little bit like calling the kettle black though. She didn't really have a leg to stand on lecturing me considering her life, so. What, oh, well, look at that. I didn't know I even did that. Must have had some paint or something on my um, brush. Almost done, John. I thought you were. Yeah, just filling us up the flowers and um, little tweaks here and there. Little tweaks here and there, right? Which is a good thing to do too, right? Absolutely. See, that was in purple. Uh, and believe it or not, one of my friends that I boarded to boarding school in Switzerland, somebody wrote me. She lives in uh, Maria, Yat Maria Yatim. She lives in Bahrain. She's still alive, or was a few years ago. He offered to let me put in contact with her, but um, you know, I thought you know, pr uh, probably wouldn't, wouldn't. But of course, I would still. If somebody from my boarding school days in Switzerland remembers me and wants to reach out and say hi, I think that'd be fun too. So, um, I bet they have totally different versions of these stories that I'm telling than um, uh, you're hearing now, right? And that's, that's kind of fun too. That's the wrong brush for that. You need to make this curve a little bit more here. So I'm gonna give this a dry, John, and uh, put it in a frame and then finish it all up there. Okay? As long as you keep your little painted fingers off my frames. Oh yeah, I know, you're so, f yeah, I should do that. You put red on my frame. I know. On my white frame. I know. I know, I can't believe I did that, can you? Just hard to believe, right? Yeah, really hard to believe. See, where's the luminous rose? Is that what this is? Yeah. This is where you get the colors. Uh,
just adjusting the color patterns. All right, let me dry it and uh, So you're not rushing to get up, so I know better. Not getting that thin enough. but the finest. Yeah? No. I'm no, gonna just dry that too while John's finding the frame. of paint. Plate of paint. And uh, scoop it up and drop it out first. Eh, I think this is too busy, the gold around okay. it. Okay. But it's nice, but that's too busy with the gold. Crack it's been hours gold. finding that one for I you. know, hours. thank you. But we should have these out anyway, ready to go. We should put them somewhere in a stack so we can just put them down. Too dark. There you go. I didn't have that. That's kind of it. Just take those out or something. I'm going to do. I don't think I have pliers up here. Little one. See if I get those. That's out. not bad either. This light green one. I didn't think it would be, but I think the blue would be better. Yeah, you know, I think that. I, I don't think that's too bad. And I can. That that helps me kind of focus on a little bit. And, you know, just check my lights and darks to see where I need things to be. Um, I don't have any pliers. I need pliers. You got pliers? I need pliers. No pliers. Hmm. What else can we grab with? When I go back, and for me, you know, I don't try to finish at any particular time like we're doing on a YouTube show. I'm, but I need to keep going and. Uh, oh, you go until you're done. Just, I just finish where, where I think it needs to be finished. You know, just keep putting my little contrast back, and I see where my. Um, um, just keep painting for a paint while. Paint is dried darker than I want. 
And, you know, that can be remedied, but you still got to remedy it, right? So that part is, you know, that's some of the things I like to do. But you know, the nice thing about this project is that um, uh, like I really have the option to paint um, whatever whatever I feel I'm expressing with this, and I'm I'm very much enjoyed doing that, and I hope you guys are enjoying the stories. And you know I. It's interesting because, you know, I don't know that people send their kids to school and boarding school. I'm just, you know, anymore. Maybe they do. And there were so many different kinds of boarding school. But one thing I did learn when I was over there was that our school was relatively um, relaxed. I mean, yeah, we had school on Saturday and they had their deal, but... Um, there were schools where the kids weren't allowed any freedom at all. And um, there were schools where um, there were all these different boarding schools. There were options. And so if I would gotten out of line too much in that one, there would have been a worse one. Does that make sense? There could have been one that was much worse than the one I was going to now. And that was important to understand. That my, I was pretty lucky in the schools that they found for me. And John's back there playing with frames. What you got there going over there, John? Oh, you're fixing that one frame. You're pulling yeah, out the pulling out all the pins. little brads so that we can use it. So we don't have to damage the painting here. No. This tree so, out. So here's the light one. Try that one. There. So much easier that is. Oh, I like that. Don't you? Yeah. I do. I, I like that a lot. I'm just, if I could just get that road the color I want, I'd be happy. Maybe I'll just try orange and white, see if I can get it that way. What color are you going for? Just need this road lighter right here as it makes the curve. There we go. And then let's try some of that warmer color on the highlight here. These would be a lot easier now to use. Particularly like this brush. That's that new company, this one, the dark one. That's that company that asked us to try their brushes. And this number 50 round, it's Zen brush is really nice. Right, Zen one. art, Zen art. This, oh, uh, yeah. this, this is really nice, this one right here. That is, gr gr you know, so. Uh, it's holding the form pretty It's holding the form. And, and look at the tiny line I'm able to make. That is. They're the same price as the other little things. We, did you put them in our store anyway? No, I have not the, done that yet. Haven't worked on the store yet, boss. Haven't worked on the store, on the Amazon store, I meant. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay, there's the green one. It's ready to go now. All right, so. Um, you know, there's still 24 hours in a day. I can't get over that. I just, I don't I, understand I know, that. just, and you, you do so well, but. Um, 
It did so well, John. But I want to do weller. So nobody's, uh, you know, wouldn't dream of, you know, challenging how well you're doing with that. So I think this is it. I'm going to take one of these uh, pasta pens and, um, or actually Artisto, which I now has become my new favorite pen. Those are, and we don't get anything for telling anybody about this, but I feel like at some point I should share something. These, these, look at all the colors. I've taken some out. These are so amazing. Look at this bright pink. If I need it just a little bit, it's almost like a luminous rose, and you can see how much ink is in there. Um, and, you, and you can tell when it needs shaking up, too. Yeah, I just want, let's see what that one does, you guys. I like that. I'm just going to shake that pen up because I would love to see what that pink does. I <laughs> just don't you. <laughs> so if you're wondering if you if you like these fly on the wall tutorials, right? If you're Exciting enjoying those episodes. and these are not tutorials, non-tutorial fly on the wall episodes, uh, story time episodes. If you like those, the more comments you leave me. Yeah, look at that. Basically, the more we need help with YouTube. We need to get our views up on the YouTube, and we, and we need the help with the search engine. We appreciate when you guys, you know, make a donation, or, and that's really nice too, right? And we, we definitely need that. But we, we appreciate that very much. But when you tell others about us, or when you... Um, God, that is a good brush. Um... And tell others about us and that kind of stuff too. That that makes a difference. And when you leave comments, when you do that, that makes a difference too. Let's see if I can get any ink down out of this. Well, and maybe I can show you that next time. I'll just I'll shelve it and try to get. It takes a, a few minutes to get those started. They don't start right away, but uh, that's all right. I may come back and add a little touch to that. But I want to thank everybody that signed up for renewed their membership or became an, an annual Academy membership in December and November. You have, if anybody's thinking about doing it, you have tell the... Um, Got about uh, 15 days left, two weeks. Yeah, so what is the value of the paintings that we're doing that we, when we sell them? How, if we were to sell this painting, what is the value of these, John? So that people understand that you get the years, you know, you sign the, up as the, a... The um, 6 by 8 for 360. The nine, eight by tens for six hundred. So it's like six hundred dollar painting that one might get. Nine by twelve is eight twenty five, and the twelve by sixteen for one thousand four hundred and fifty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's in itself is is kind of neat. So the thank new you. Pens are paint. This is just. They're not ink. Yeah, these are not. These are again. Um, it's a chance to, to share some stories. So. Perhaps help get some new subscribers for, for us on YouTube, and uh, maybe uh, someone might want to learn to actually learn to, to paint like this and consider giving themselves an Academy membership for Christmas or whatever. But, you know, um, if you want to learn to paint like this, uh, look at acrylicpaintingwithginger.com um, and check us out because we've got some great tutorials, and um, I think you'd be surprised how much you can learn. I think we're over. The show's over. Yeah, I feel like I just got here. When Let's leave you, you with the family pictures. By the bean. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. See you on the next exciting episode of Fly on the Wall, which will probably be tomorrow. This is star storytelling with... No, it won't be tomorrow. It's not Fly on the Wall. It's storytelling with Ginger. Storytelling. Storytelling. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Look for these next week. You want to catch up what we've done so far. We've done... We've done uh, four this week. You might have fun catching up on what those are. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.